Okay. <laughs> I am really sorry that today, due to technical problem, uh, we had to begin uh, this webinar uh, slightly late. Uh, please excuse us uh, for that. Normally, it doesn't happen, but today, for some reason, technically, it has happened. And uh, on behalf of Space Education and Research Foundation, I welcome Professor R. Saroop and all the participants from different countries uh, who have joined us uh, to, uh, for this webinar. Before I hand over the mic to Professor R. Suresh, I will give a brief introduction uh, for him to you. Uh, Professor R. Suresh had a very excellent academic career. Uh, he did his postgraduate degree in mathematics with three diplomas in managerial science systems, analysis, uh, data processing, uh, <laughs> system analysis and data processing. Okay. Uh, he, after that, he joined IMD as a trainee meteorologist in 1989 and worked there till 2018 in various capacities and retired as a deputy director general of meteorology and with a speciality his speciality is aviation uh, meteorology services he has a vast experience in aviation meteorology radar meteorology mathematical and statistical uh, modeling of modeling of set uh, of, of various systems and uh, he has uh, developed uh, satellite meteorology courses. Uh, he uh, earned his PhD on an interdisciplinary uh, subject, which is mathematics and geography, from University of Madras, Chennai, in India. Uh, his thesis was on aviation flight planning. He has published uh, more than 58 research papers in national and international journals. His paper on satellite meteorology using TOVS data from cyclone for cyclone tracking and forecasting was awarded prestigious biennial Mosum Award in 2002-2003. He introduced online aviation meteorology briefing in India, which is being used internationally uh, by more than 2,500 uh, users. He was awarded a certificate of merit from Ministry of Earth Sciences in 2007 for this excellent work. He has given more than 100 lectures as plenary invited and contributed uh, lectures uh, in national and international symposium workshop etc he has conducted classes and he has been conducting classes on meteorology and allied sciences uh, in postgraduate uh, courses of science and technology uh, at various universities colleges and academic uh, institutions both in civil and defense uh, training centers. He is a, a resource person for uh, World Meteorological Organization for class one and two uh, meteorologists uh, for program uh, training and uh, program and also uh, International Civil Aviation Organization uh, Forum. He has organized many national and international symposium and workshop. Currently, he is chairman of uh, IMS, that is India Meteorology uh, Department, Meteorology uh, Society or Chennai chapter. With these few words, now I invite uh, Professor R. Saroop to join, uh, to start his talk. Professor R. Suez, please. Thank you, Professor Bhatt. Good morning, good afternoon, 
as the case may be to all the international participants who are at, uh, doing this particular webinar program the topic of first model today is introduction to satellite meteorology for introducing to satellite meteorology first of all we should know the basics of meteorology and how the satellite meteorology is evolved that is the reason i would like to say a few words in about some four five slides about the concept of meteorology meteorology is nothing but a complex science that explains various atmospheric processes and affect the day to day life whose data will be used for building up the climatology it is a study of science of weather and climate it is the study of atmospheric processes and the associated causes because of the processes now let us distinguish between what is weather and climate as i said weather, which is nothing but an instantaneous sum total of the ambient air temperature humidity pressure wind which is a vector quantity of both surface and direction and speed the transparency of the atmosphere that is called as visibility clouds of different categories presentation of all kinds of light from drizzle rain shower sleet ice etc right the weather is normally caused by a short term variation of the mass and energy exchange between the atmosphere and the air climate is a long term mean long term average of weather by long term we mean it is a minimum of 30 years now the atmospheric science is divided into two branches one is meteorology another one is the climatology we discuss meteorology as a complex science how complex it is i am going to show in a view graph and the climatology is concerned with the long term statistical property that constitute the climate this particular show slide shows the inputs of meteorology from different streams of physical science we have take input from mathematics and astronomy because the kepler's law newtonian law everything is governed in addition we will be talking about taylor series maclaurin series for processing the data besides this the underlying process being told by the science like geography and geology because the earth and ocean they interact that is why the oceanographical science is also needed for understanding the meteorology physics is a mandatory one because we are going to study about the radiation physics in a short while from now and we will be studying about the cloud dynamics chemistry is playing a role in meteorology because we know atmospheric chemistry which is talking that current day about ozone hole ozone greenhouse gases etc then all these parameters how we are going to measure that will be governed by the engineering and implementation concepts the data thus obtained has to be processed by means of computers the number crunching is the major problem in numerical modeling so that's why i say meteorology is a complex science taking input from all the basic sciences now the application of meteorology is a various domain the basic application of meteorology is for economic benefit and for a comfortable living the economic benefit 
is being raped by the transportation sector like aviation and shipping and surface transportation and non conventional energy sources in addition hydraulics hydrodynamics etc which produce electricity defense field public weather services for general warning about weather right from rain up to severe weather like thunderstorm hailstorm cyclonic storm what not everything then it has application in mountaineering also forecasting and warning is the breadwinner for us so from the meteorological applications right away a forecast goes the forecast we always have it has a use value and it has some uncertainty also because everything if you are in a position to forecast probably you know science will not be having any charm each the impact of human activities on weather and climate so that is also being addressed nowadays with various applications related to meteorological sciences we have different branches like physical meteorology which talks about the atmospheric constitution and then composition uh, cloud physics aeronomy which governs about the upper atmosphere synaptic meteorology which talks about the large scale flow movement of air which causes the weather systems and then weather movement etc dynamic meteorology which is numerical modeling numeric weather prediction modeling related work thereby we will be in a position to forecast and foreshadow what could be the atmosphere from 2 hours to next 72 120 hours or so there are branches of climatology as well similar to meteorological branches physical climatology which talk about the underlying cause of the climate the climatography which is the presentation of statistics on regional scale global scale and micro scale of climatic parameters applied climatology which talks about the practical problem how best you know we will be in a position to comfortably live by providing a air conditioner or cooler or heater etc depending on the area in which we live now comes once we are having the surface based meteorological parameters as well what is the necessity for going into remote sensing technology or instrumentation this can be discussed in many fold the existing observation system as such from the surface based surface as well as the observation are inadequate to understand the vagaries of weather as we may be knowing when we are walking out or when we are riding in a motorcycle or a car half a kilometer away there won't be any rain whereas here we have drenched or vice versa so the vagaries of weather they vary in terms of hundreds of meters to hundreds of kilometers so that is why the fluctuation and aberration probably we have to have observation to that extent no country is capable of having the surface observation to that extent to resolve the micro scale vagaries of weather in addition over the vast expanse of ocean we don't have any observation even if there are any in situ measurements from the ship or something there it has got its own problem due to toggling by and sea relay work and then number of ships are not also not sufficient so this probably we will be discussing in ensuing lessons why the surface instrumentation is insufficient to be used in the numerical model that will involve some computational instability when we are doing numerical modeling of highly nonlinear partial differential equation to be converted into difference equation which requires sporadically located up to data point to be placed at a regularly placed grid and interval etc which we are calling as object analysis so on and so forth we will be discussing in the ensuing lessons now we are going to talk about the radiant energy radiation physics because in this introductory lecture i want to know how the satellite technology or the remote sensing technology as a well and then what is the need of it is the first model the prime source of energy is from the sun the solar energy is transported or exchanged in the form of conduction convection radiation etc that we know in school physics 
and this particular radiant energy is reflected, scattered, absorbed. All these phenomena itself have been learned earlier. Now I'll be covering in brief about some of the basic laws in the next few slides. The Earth atmosphere plays a vital role in energy balancing. The short wave balance and then long wave balance both are important for us. Otherwise, you know, the change in energy is causing the change in weather pattern and associated climatic changes also. Remote sensing help us to study the earth ocean atmosphere. That is the prime idea of remote sensing technology. This is the basic uh, school physics about the composition of earth atmosphere. So the gases which are available in the line share like oxygen 78% in volume and uh, uh, sorry, nitrogen 78%, oxygen 20.9 or 21% approximately, that meaning are all trace gases. There are empty number of trace gases which I am unable to list out here because this is only adjusted. Just why these gases are needed? Because we are going to talk about the emission from all, absorption from all, and the contribution by all, all these gases. Now coming to the basic radiation physics. First and foremost, we should remember that all objects of temperature minimum 0 degree, that is 0 degree absolute, they emit radiation. By 0 degree absolute, we mean it is minus 273 degree Celsius. So any body which is having a 0 degree absolute will be emitting the radiation. So this is the basic funda, basic philosophy. Now the radiative transfer, the only source is from sun. The sun's radiation which is received in the equatorial tropics, because the sun's propagation will be moving from Tropic of Cancer to Tropic of Capricorn, and thereby the excess energy will be over this particular area, that is about 30 to 32 degree north, 32, 32, 32 degree south. In this area, excess energy is stored, that is being transported forward on either side through something called general circulation. Thereby, this excess energy is used in the extra and polar latitude so that their life will be comfortable. Now, the basic radiation units. The rate of energy is called as radiation flux. We know joule per second or watts. And the radiant flux of sun is something called 3.9 into 10 power 26 watts or joule per second. The next unit defined here is irradiance. It is a radian flux per unit area. The unit is watt per meter square. This irradiance is passing through the outermost layer of visible disk of the sun. That is that particular energy 3 power 9 into 10 power 26 watt. It is spread over to 4 pi r square where r is the value 7 into 10 power 8 meter or 7 into 10 power 5 kilometer. So with this huge amount of energy is available from the sun to various planets. The irradiance per unit wavelength per unit wavelength I mean that is radiant energy earlier we discussed and probably for each unit each wavelength that is contributing a term called monochromatic irradiance. We use this symbol E lambda. A irradiance per unit solid angle, by solid angle we mean uh, the earlier CGS unit that is the uh, uh, angle which separates from the obliquity. So that is called as radiance which we use by symbol called L. And we use the notation zenith, everything I will be showing in the coming slides. It is angle between the direction of the radiation and normal to the surface under consideration. So, the energy which is coming in, they are in uh, different form, ultraviolet radiation form normally 0.3 to 0.7 and then some textbook will be saying 0.375, somebody will be saying 0.4 to 0.7. This is the order that is the visible. Then you have to 1 micrometer also. 1 micrometer means 10 power minus 6 of a meter. Visible radiation. 
then we have one micrometer in the IR radiation they have been put in the slides. So the UV radiation less than 0.4 or 0.36 whatever be the value they are having lethal effects normally you know when we say about the atmospheric chemistry on ozone the ozone protects us from the UV radiation impinging on skin otherwise in a skin cancer will happen and then lethal effect will be created. In our study we will be concentrating on the visible radiation and infrared radiation visible 0.4 to 0.7 and infrared anything beyond 1 micrometer. Then it is a problem, I think. Nothing is moving out. Sir, can I have a command that angle? Hello? Sorry, there was a technical uh, hitch or something like that. Uh, there was a break and then we were discussing about UV, visible uh, and IR form of ray, uh, wavelengths. The spectrum is shown now. I hope everyone is viewing now. The visible spectrum typical wavelengths have been provided here. These are all used in our satellite imagery form. Let's say this slide. Now coming to the radiation law, which is the main topic of today. Hope there will not be any further disturbance by internet connectivity. The wavelength of propagation, it depends on the emitting body. As I said, any body which is having zero degree absolute will be variating the radiation. The Planck's law is the initial law based on which so many other laws have been deduced. 
it talks about the amount of energy emitted at a wavelength lambda by a formula called r e lambda is varying upon inversely the fifth power of the wavelength and based on that so many other laws have been deduced and spectra of radiation as given by sun's outer periphery and then its long wave form terrestrial radiation form that have been put over the graph the maximum emission corresponds to 5780 degree kelvin for sun and then 255 degree kelvin for earth that has been found out by planck based on his postulations based on the planck's law the wavelengths dependency or contribution to the atmospheric radiation has been studied in depth between any two wavelengths the radiant contribution p and very well reduced and based on that we can use a wide spectrum or a narrow spectrum in sensing the atmosphere remotely that is the remote sensing application this is the foundation of remote sensing technology then comes the wien's law the wavelength of peak emission is inversely proportional to the in, uh, absolute power of the emitting body and the proportionality constant has been worked out as 2897 the wavelength of maximum emission is 2897 depend uh, divided by temperature as we have seen in the earlier graph for sun the maximum wavelength emission is around 0.5 micrometer and the corresponding temperature is 5800 or 5790 that is the order in the case of earth the wavelength of peak emission corresponds to 11.54 micron and the corresponding temperature is 255 you know the surface temperature is roughly 15 degree celsius which corresponds to 273 plus 15 288 degree kelvin whereas here the peak emission is coming from 2555 that is 33 degree kelvin less value is there where comes this 15 degree celsius it is all contributed or explained by something called the greenhouse effect which is the property of the atmosphere which is transparent to visible but somewhat opaque and repelling to the terrestrial or long wave form of radiation so the greenhouse gases contribute or keep the earth surface warm by 15 degree celsius keeping the average temperature throughout the globe then comes the uh, stefan boltzmann's law which talks about the amount of energy emitted by a black body that is a good emitter is a good absorber later on we are going to stay about picas uh, law a black body is a body which emits at the maximum energy whatever it is contained in 
this varies as the fourth absolute temperature it is the fourth degree of the absolute temperature it varies like that so the proportion of the constant sigma is the stefan boltzmann constant that value has been given here by and large we can very well deduce from this equation that the amount of energy emitted increases with the temperature of the emitting body then comes the kirchhoff's law for that you know we have to define what is emissivity emissivity is that amount of radiant energy emitted by the actual body to that what could have been emitted by a black body that is emission by the real body divided by emission by the black body and uh, application of the kirchhoff's law at the same wavelength or a particular wavelength good emitters are good absorbers the value of emissivity depends on lambda for all the black bodies for all lambda the emissivity is supposed to be one For any opaque surface, the radiant energy, whatever has been incident on it, either it will be absorbed or it will be reflected. So the total energy is either absorbed or reflected. If I divide the right hand side value to the left hand side value, the absorbed value divided by incident value is called as the absorbed duty, that is a lambda. the reflected value divided by the incident value is called as the reflectivity which otherwise we call it as albedo albedo is nothing but that portion of energy which is reflected back out of the energy which has been incident on it any strong reflector are normally weak absorbers say for example snow and the weak reflectors like the tar bitumen and asphalt they are weak reflectors but they are very strong absorbers that is one of the reason during hot and we are unable to walk over the tar and bitumen surface or asphalt surface for non opaque layers in addition to those energy which are reflected back or incident on it there is something called transmission which is taking place which we define as transmissivity so that particular value probably we denote by the symbol tau for a particular wavelength because each one is wavelength dependent that is why suffix is always lambda for either absorptivity or reflectivity or transmissivity that has been defined like this these are all the basic laws we are supposed to know that's why i am spending much time on it and then probably you know the satellite meteorology concept i will be introducing in later part and then the next lesson onwards we will be talking only about the satellite meteorology or remote sensing aspects but this is the basic foundation we are supposed to know then only we will be in a position to gather much knowledge on it so we talked about the albedo which otherwise we called as reflectivity the wealth of albedo has been given for different types of underground climb that has been posted over here because the satellite is passing over all this area it covers globally so some soil will be bare soil some will be sandy some will be black soil and all or there will be conifer forest or forest or oceanic surface grass etc that is why the reflectivity value also satellite should know otherwise you know the data will be misrepresented now we are coming to the absorption the energy which is coming from sun is also getting absorbed by the atmosphere the energy which is radiated back from the earth also is getting absorbed so we have to define that absorptivity term we have to define total amount of energy absorbed by the incident on it now with this we are going to introduce some concept called the beer's law and savas child law so for that reason only i am introducing this particular slide the absorption of the parallel beam radiation when it pass through a uh, area Maybe from sun we are talking about that's why it's a downward propagation. It is proportional to the number of molecules per unit area of the absorbing media, or the path, or that is what we are calling as optical path 
through which the energy is getting transmitted. So that by simple d lambda, it is the energy which is absorbed by the energy which is incident on it. That is the fraction. It is defined as a constant of proportionality. That is the coefficient. And rho is the density of the absorbed medium. It depends on the thickness. So that the delta is the thickness is there. And the pi is the zenith angle which we are talking about. The angle of incident with the angle of normal which is supposed to be the vertical. And uh, this particular term rho secant pi d is that that after the d is that is the thickness. That is why it talks about volume swept over a particular area. So when the uh, collimatic beam or a parallel beam which is passing through a media of thickness delta is that and this is the zenith angle which I have been talking about. It is the vertical and then it is the angle at which it is coming in. That is why this angle difference is there. Da lambda we have already defined. We have to integrate. So by integrating we are getting this result and ultimate result will be E lambda is any wavelength over top of atmosphere e power minus secant by this particular term. This particular term we are going to call as optical thickness, optical depth. So the irradiance decreases monotonically because e power minus is there. That is why the word called as a, uh, it is decreasing monotonically with the increasing path wavelength or path length. This path is governed by the thickness and the total quantity of the uh, uh, k lambda rho dz that is called as optical depth or uh, optical thickness. It is a measure of cumulative depletion that is what I have been saying when a, uh, when a ray experiences through a path and then it is getting depleted and absorbed term in terms of transmittivity they are related by a exponential relationship like this. Here, whatever we are discussing, these are all talking about because the radiation which is coming from sun is getting absorbed, the radiation which is emanating from the terrestrial or earth is also getting absorbed and that absorption, after absorption it will be re-emitting and it will be scattering also. All this philosophy probably you know, the remote sensing technology has to use it to explore the atmosphere and alone the meaningful parameter can be deduced. That is the reason all this governing law. So they are first understood, then they are put into instrumentation with that only the satellite technology has evolved. So based on the base law, we have found out there are trace gases like water vapor, carbon dioxide, ozone, methane. There are so many empty number of gases. There are strong absorption bands, there are weak absorption bands. They have been listed over here. There are innumerable gases probably that I will be covering in uh, terms of unit 4 or unit 5 during that period. And then present day spectra, any gas like uh, even the smallest trace gas like methane, that also probably we are going to uh, detect and then we are going to use the probability in our spectral channels. So that is why all this information they have been tabulated over here. Now the last but not the least law in the current uh, brief introduction about the radiation physics is the Sauerstein equation. It is uh, what you call the uh, upper version or taking into account of the Beats law which is applicable only for the solar radiation. Now from the earth radiation how we are going to say and then for that uh, particular uh, concept is governed by Sauerstein. So here the difference between beats law. Beats law is talking about the way of the ray is passing from upper to down, that is sun to earth. So here we are talking about earth to sun, that is the terrestrial radiation. So whatever we have studied in, the, in terms of what you call the minus symbol and then uh, that path, we will be changing it to positive symbol that has been put over here. And the irradiance is put in with the symbol of the terrestrial radiation, that is L long wave form. For that, for that reason, L has been used commonly as a symbol. So here again the same integration etc. 
and the ultimate sour child equation that has been placed with that uh, last. Reducing the equation based on Beard's law and Savachai law, some experimentation has been done, uh, conducted way back in the 1970s for Earth as a planet, Mars, and other planets, also Moon, etc., by different uh, probing technologies like rocket, etc., and making this one. So, this is the ultimate graph. The strong absorption or the spike, which is at 15 micrometer. That is the final result. And we used to say 12 to 15 is the atmospheric window through which something is escaping, but still the absorption is also taking place. So that is why the 15 micro, uh, micrometer band in remote sensing, especially for images, we are not in the position to comfortably use. In addition to the absorption, scattering, transmission, etc., there is one more phenomena called scattering. And the scattering is also similar to the same form. And the scattering depends on the size parameter, which we used to call as uh, the depending on the size, uh, shape parameter in radar parlance, and then size parameter in uh, remote sensing satellite layer meteorology parlance. Two pi of a lambda, where r is the uh, size or the radius of the particular scattering media. And uh, there are three laws which are uh, governing about the scattering. One has been told by Raleigh, another one by me, and the third one is the optics. There are four scattering, etc. I am not going into detail. Raleigh scattering occurs when the shape parameter or size parameter is less than 0.1. That is, the object are of comparable size with that of lambda, that is, wavelength. Then alone, you will be getting because it is 2 by r by lambda. That is why this value has to come as less than 0.1. Then that particular appearance is called as L scattering. In the case of B scattering, the shape parameter has to vary somewhere between 0.1 and 50. In the case of geometry scattering or optic scattering, the shape parameter will be exceeding 50. So, with this, the energy balance of the atmosphere that has been found out the slide which I earlier shown and then one more slide I am showing this one. Now coming to the remote sensing on satellites. How this radiation physics etc. we are using it. Only about some 7 or 8 slides I will be in a position to cover up for today's uh, topic. The ensuing uh, models etc. we will be covering only on satellites. Now what do you mean by sky and satellite? It is nothing but an object revolving around another object. That is the basic definition. Moon is a natural satellite for Earth, and Earth and other planets are a natural satellites for the solar system, having Sun as one of its faculty as governed by Kepler's law. The moment we know about satellite which is revolving around another object, Sputnik was the first one which was launched sometime in October 1957. And the governing laws are Kepler's law and Newton's law of gravitation. There are two objects of various masses, various sizes. The force of attraction between these two masses, as we know by the Newton's law of gravitation, is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between these two. This we know or we have studied in our school physics. So now we keep an object, say, bigger dimension as Earth and a smaller dimension as satellite. We will call Me as the mass of the Earth and M as the mass of the satellite. So the force of attraction is G M M E by R12 square, where R12 is the distance from the center of the Earth to the satellite. Now this is the force of attraction, the bigger planet that is what we call as Earth is attracting the satellite. So the satellite will be attracted down, but we don't want it to happen because we want the satellite to revolve around the Earth. So in order to keep the satellite revolving around the Earth, 
comfortably there must be an opposite force against the gravitation which earth pulls in that is called as centripetal force so that is governed by the formula mv square by r that has been equated here the force of attraction will be balanced by mv square by r so you can see that r1 is appearing in the denominator one with a square other one without a square so that gets cancelled because by mathematics a non zero parameter can be cancelled either in numerator or denominator if both are occurring to that in an equation so we have combined the equation force is gm mv m multiplied by me divided by r1 square mv square by r12 r12 is cancelled on r12 is remaining on the left hand side v is square root of gm me by r12 what we can see here me the mass of earth is available whereas the mass of satellite is not available so the orbital velocity of the satellite is independent of its own mass that is the fundamental phenomena fundamental basic we are supposed to know so the orbital velocity is totally independent of the satellite mass the orbital period that is it has revolved in a circle the circular radius is uh, we already defined it is r12 the distance from the center of the earth to the satellite altitude 2 pi r that is the circumference so that will be covered with the velocity so that is why the orbital period v dt is the total distance traveled right so the orbital period is the total distance traveled by the velocity so velocity we already defined orbital period is defined so now velocity we can very well substitute here so ultimately the orbital period is 2 pi r raised to the power 3 by 2 because this square root of 3 by 2 it is going to top that's why it has come over here and the denominator part root of gm is appearing here so we was orbital period has been the equation has been derived if i substitute the altitude of the satellite as 850 and earth radius as 6371 km then applying the unit change etc we ultimately get for every 50 km the orbital period is 102 minutes so that is what normally the polar orbiters we know about nova 12 14 15 etc they were orbiting uh, and uh, currently also there are more these and then there are on the meta satellites frangion of china there are so many polar orbiter satellites they have different altitudes and the height also will be different based on the height the orbital period will be different now this is about the polar orbiter to compute for the geostation they have orbit the orbital velocity here is nothing but the velocity as that of the earth because the satellite has to rotate it does a ball on rotation completely around the earth with the same velocity as that of earth so that is why the orbital velocity is nothing but the angular velocity of the earth which is one rotation in 24 hours 2 pi 2 pi radians it has to cover in 24 hours that is why 2 pi radians divided by 24 hours into 60 minutes 60 seconds this is the order that is called as angular velocity of the earth so for geostationary orbit the velocity has to be at the same order keeping omega as v equal to v and this value we know the formula of v we can deduce what would be the height of the geostationary orbit that is the idea now so we know orbital period orbital period is 2 pi r by v we are substituted here M making some mathematical jugglery i am squaring it so that power 3 by 2 will be becoming q so that i am taking as the left hand side so this will be 4 pi r 4 pi square this will be square root will go gme so that has been put out here so r1 to q is keep uh, retaining only gme in the numerator this t square i am bringing it to the denominator there will be 2 pi by t which is nothing but the velocity that is the angular velocity there 
So that value is known. If I substitute, I will get a value for R12 cube. From there, I will get a value for R12. So that is the order. When we say about geo stationary satellite, which is about 36,000 kilometers, this is the way in which it has been found out. So for that reason only, I have kept the slides. I hope it is appealing to you. So coming back with so much amount of complete, uh, complicated uh, vertical computation adjustment is the task. Ultimate result is a palpable form, consumable form. Orbital period is a simple form, 84.4, 1 plus altitude of the satellite divided by the earth radius raised to the power 3 by 2. So substitute here, you get for different heights, different orbital periods. For geostationary, it is 144440 minutes, which is nothing but 24 hours. Whereas for 850 meter, we already have 850 kilometer, we already said about 102 minutes. So in 102 minutes means that particular satellite path, which goes around the globe, round and round, it will be having 14 orbits in a day. 14 times it will be revolving around the globe. So once it will be say, passing over, Bay of Bengal, Indian area, and then going north, etc. Again, it will come back. Then, after 102 minutes, it will be covering Arabian Sea, Middle East, and then going up. Then, after some time, it will be covering Pacific, going up, etc. Like that, you know, it will be traveling continuously 14 orbits in a day for this particular orbital period. So, this is about the polar orbit. For geostrophic orbit, the earlier view graph. For inside, we have given the position the same way in which the goes American satellite, meter satellite, uh, Euro, Nova satellite itself, everything has been put out there. We have for simple understanding. Okay, viewers, now I am coming to the end of the slide, that is a summary. We just introduced ourselves into the concept of satellite meteorology from the basic idea of meteorology. We have discussed some governing equation, radiations, laws, etc. in brief. We have reduced an orbital period equation for polar orbital as well as the geostation satellite height estimation, etc. And in the next two modules, etc., as given in the topic, probably we will be covering much more in detail about the satellite concept, satellite sounding, satellite images, application satellite in weather studies, climate studies and image interpretation and product derivation in the next few days provided today's internet problem or something like that, that will not happen tomorrow etc so here i am putting the acknowledgement which is mandatory i have given some references which may be right from uh, meteorology book satellite books satellite publications climatology books and climatology publications. From there, you know, the cross references can be many. So, with this, let me conclude today's lecture. Maybe by tomorrow, we will be covering the evolution of satellites, how it has evolved, because we saw only from 57 the first satellite was installed, and now the current day there are so many satellites. How the polar orbiter is different from uh, geostation satellite. All these concepts that are by tomorrow's like that, and then they have tomorrow inter interpretation of image and then product derivation, etc. So, with this, we will be in a position to get much more idea pushed in. This is purely an elementary uh, satellite meteorology introduction for those who are not at all ushered into this particular concept. For those who already know it, please excuse me. Thank you.